Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel. Now behind me, I've got an extremely rare and intriguing car that once again, very kindly, Eden Prestige and Performance here in Fleet, Hampshire, have invited me to come down and film with. And I just want to take this chance now to say a massive thank you to Eden Prestige and Performance and to you guys for watching the videos because of course without you, I wouldn't be getting more and more opportunities like this. So with that, if you haven't already, please do go ahead, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Now, the Vauxhall VXR8, what I'm here to film today. Now initially, you might be a little bit like me and think, Ugh, it's, just, it's just a Vauxhall but let me hit you with some headline facts to try and keep you intrigued. The car is powered by an LS3 engine and that is the 6.2 litre V8 that you would find in a C6 Corvette or an older Camaro SS. Now, this engine is naturally aspirated as you might expect and produces a ridiculous 430 brake horsepower. And in fact, this model of the VXR8, the 2009, is the, actually the first model year to have that uprated 6.2 litre V8 with 430 brake horsepower. The predecessors to this, such as the Monaro, I think were powered by a six litre V8. But after this, there were a few more iterations of the VXR8, a few supercharged ones, I think one called a Bathurst version with way over 550 brake horsepower, which is ridiculous. And one thing you may know this car for and that it is notorious for is the way it sounds. And I am certainly very, very excited to see how it sounds in a minute. Now, before we do that, I just want to do a quick walk around of this very car that is here for sale at Eden Prestige and Performance and also show you the inside. So here it is then. This is the 6.2 litre V8 mammoth of a car that I want to talk to you about today. As you can see, it is a five door saloon. It's, I was going to say looks understated, but actually we're starting from probably the most aggressive part of the car, which is the back. It's got those smoked out tail lights there. And obviously the party piece, which I would say is this pretty large wing. Moving down from that, obviously something that I'm very excited to hear shortly. Uh, I mean, the size of these exhausts, honestly, let me try and give you a bit of perspective. That's my hand there, and it's pretty much only just spreading across the circumference of that pipe, and of which there are two. Moving around the side of the car, we've got actually pretty tinted windows at the back uh, quarters, which in this country you can actually have a 100% tint, if I'm right, and uh, a nice black stripe which goes all the way around to the front, accompanied by these blacked out wheels. In obviously a red color is the bodywork and I think that does contrast quite nicely. Now obviously we've got the interesting badge down here which is actually I don't know the full history of it but I'm pretty sure that is the Holden logo and what's more interesting is the 6.2 liter LS3 badge right underneath it. I mean I said the back is the most aggressive part but actually this front quarter is pretty aggressive too and this sort of pretty aggressive black splitter at the front. It's a it's a pretty aggressive stance and it sits pretty nicely on the arches as you can see. Anyway, something I want to show you that maybe uh, stops interesting me quite quickly with this car is the interior. Now, look, I don't want to completely slate it. Let me just move my very orange bag. Um it's not awful but it's it's not amazing it's not why you would buy this car it's not an a35 amg let's put it that way inside if you sit in the driver's seat it is very much well you could be looking at the dials from within a Vauxhall Astra the same goes for the wheel so there's nothing particularly special there although it is actually flat bottomed the seats are embroidered with VXR which makes them feel a little bit more special and they're actually almost buckety in a way and in the middle one of the additional features you get in this car from say an Astra is these three dials with oil temperature oil pressure and your voltage now as I mentioned of course this is a five door meaning it has got five seats and yeah pretty spacious in the back you've got the VXR embroidery there again it'd be a pretty cool car to take your kids to school in that is for sure and some big looking speakers over there so I'm sure the sound system is pretty good but like i say this is a car that you could theoretically use for the school run and actually at a price point of i think just over eighteen thousand pounds in this case you know that is pretty much what you would pay for a relatively new bmw 320d now i have to be certain on the year of this car but i believe it is a 2009 so obviously you'd be buying a newer 3 series than this however yeah let's get in it and drive it and see 
if it would be an interesting proposition i think obviously if you're going to get a 320d you're probably not going to be in the market for a 6.2 liter v8 um, but yeah look that's enough of me talking i thought i'd give you guys a bit more information in this one about the car um, but yeah let's 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 start it up hit the road and uh, listen to that all important sound coming from the v8 <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are inside of the VX R8, joined by Anthony once again. Please welcome him back, as always. Pleasure as always, thank it you is, very much. I think I am I am a bad omen, aren't I? Because we've had really <laughs> nice weather. Are. I think some of the other videos on my channel that I've filmed in the last three weeks when I've been filming with Eden, I've been in the sunshine. Um, it just seems to be that every time I decide it's a good day to come here and film something, it's not the best weather. You've, and just got a, you've just got a questionable choice in cars. I don't that's know more the thing, isn't it? To, you're just trying to throw us out. It's, oh, it's raining. Let's take a rear wheel drive monster machine. The XR8 out, yeah. Yeah, why not? Fantastic choice. Yeah, could have gone with anything four wheel drive. Could have taken a Range Rover out today. We do, um, if that's what ticks, you know, there's a customer <laughs> out there and it's a good day to take something like that out. But, but no, it no. must be Sports the Holden. car, muscle, machine. <laughs> And in this, the rain. This thing does feel like pretty, pretty raw. It's quite reminiscent for me being in this car, although I've never been anything like this, and certainly not a, not an earlier Monaro or VXR8. I did have a C7 Corvette in the States a few months back, nice. which is just uh, yes, yeah, a slightly later iteration of this engine, I think. Yeah, 460 brake, but at least the noise and the way it feels is very reminiscent of that. So it's actually quite taking me back to that experience. But to have that in a five-door saloon. That's just what makes this thing a little bit bonkers or or crazy. I think that's what a lot of people, you know, we've sold, I think we've sold at least seven or eight of these, at least whilst, well, as part of Eden Prestigial Performance, I've been here for three years and the business has been around for just over three years. So okay. we've done seven in three years and anyone who comes to us and does buy one is looking for that ultimate balance of, well, I want a big V8, but the missus said I can't have an impractical car. So okay. there's no argument to, yeah. you know, you go home and you go, I found something, it's practical, you can fit the kids in and it's got a ton of boot space, but it's just got a whopping great big, uh, whopping great big V8 in it. And you might not want to mention to the missus the sort of economy figures you're gonna get from one of these. Yeah, yeah don't worry about it, I mean. We're not quite in single figures, but we're only- We're close, we're teens. <laughs> it's, uh, it, we're in the teens, I mean, averaging at the moment, uh, we're looking at 13, 14. 12.7. Yes, exactly. Ignore that. Sorry, I was just trying, I'm going to try and fluff Nudge it up it off a bit. where you can. For a lot of people, though, this is uh, this is almost like a, you treat it like a motorbike. It's like a summer car. Yeah. You use it when it's dry, there's no wind, optimum road conditions. So, opposite to what we're doing today. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> hey, you know what? Um, why not? We're the car's for sale. I saw this um, and it's something that's extremely interesting, as I said in the introduction. Like, you don't, well, you don't A, see these on the road, but I don't really ever see them anywhere for sale or anything. So I thought this would be a really cool car and a great opportunity to jump on before this car does inevitably sell very quickly to share with all of you guys and obviously for me to experience as well. Because when else am I going to get to have a, have a go in a VXR8? Exactly. So, yeah, obviously, guys, do check this car out if you're interested in it but also comment below if you're not in the microphone what you think about these cars because i always remember i think in the days of top gear when they first had the monaro which was the six litre v8 yeah and i was just all struck by that thing because it was like 35 grand at the time and it had as much power as a ferrari it sounded better than one um so i find these cars personally quite exciting and yeah obviously super happy to be in one today even though as we've said a hundred times, I've chosen the wrong day for it. <laughs> <laughs> as you could probably piece together already in comparison to other cars you've been in, spec is not the priority no. on, on a VXR8. I think the most important feature this car has is probably the help button. <laughs> <laughs> that note, see that's When you get yourself the, into some trouble. That's not help. the help button that you probably think it is, although that would be nice, wouldn't no, it? No, that would just be helping you with the nav system probably. probably yeah, so yeah every time you thing. look down at the fuel gauge and you realise your bank account's out, empty. You're like, help! help. <laughs> Right.
right. It's quite an interesting, you know, place to be actually because you have stepped back ten years. Yes, and that is noticeable. And also the biggest thing that catches absolutely everyone out. Yeah. The indicators and the windscreen wipers are on different columns. Right. That's so I've had endless test drives where I'm like, turn left, and then they use that column, and then the windscreen wipers go. <laughs> and they're like, or they so go to use the windscreen wipers, and they're indicating left. I see. So, yeah, do bear that in mind. When we go around a roundabout, you go to put your indicator on, and you actually turn your windscreen wipers on. It's that one. <laughs> That's not yeah. much use, is it? It's a, it's a killer. <laughs> so, let's pop it into drive. Old, yes, yeah, it's, it's like the Ford Focus hire car I had in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. The gearbox. Handbrake. Handbrake. Big old manual chunky handbrake. So How it's just that button on there, that's it. But it just... <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Oh dear. Can't do the handbrake. How on right, earth? So, wait, it's lift. Right, I see, I see. It's a lift and a push type thing. Work, work their muscles. Right, so you've reminded me how to drive a car. Uh, yep, that's, that's a good start, isn't it? It's like driving lesson. But yeah. in a six litre, six <laughs> point, six point two. Maybe six this point is, two. Is this what they do in Australia? I don't do you think know. They have driving lessons in Utes. They're like the seventeen. Year, seventeen year olds. Like crikey, mate, get crikey. in the car. Get in the car. We'll go for a drive in a six point two V eight. There's a seventeen year old there trying to catch the back end. I think now. these cars got left out have to be. Ah, he's done it. Ah, ah your windscreen wipers indicators. <laughs> So that's so already in the first 30 seconds I have failed to use a handbrake. You just failed your driving test, you're done. I also did the windscreen wipers instead of an indicator. I let you off on the first time to be fair because everyone does it. They'll go to the indicate and the old because they changed the, the columns round. I do it again, it's inexcusable. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you actually, Anthony, because I didn't know got it right that time. Good. I didn't know when I was sort of introducing the car at the start of the video, I was saying how it's red, obviously. Yeah, but it's good stuff. You were saying you've sold like six or seven or eight of these over three years or so. What colours do you often see? Red is the go-to colour. Okay. <laughs> I didn't Big, know if it was a red, red colour yeah. option. Uh, look, well the colours the colours that are common out there is red, they call it sting red. Sting red. Sting red. I know that just because well we do a lot of red ones. Yeah. Uh, there are black ones out there, not a lot of black ones I've seen. Grey, quite a few grey ones out there, and white. White tends to be limited to the Bathurst edition of the VXR8. Which is like the supercharged... Yes, so essentially gorgeous. what some bonkers Australian, I'll get my accent in there again, uh, <laughs> thought, you know what? Six litre V8 isn't enough. Oh, no. What else could I put in the bot under the bonnet? And they went, let's just put a supercharger in there. And they labelled that, yeah, essentially they labelled it the Bathurst edition, which is like Lucifer personified in a car. Yes. It's just the devil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've Absolute never I've crazy. never driven one. Uh, my I think my old general manager has driven one okay. and expressed his uh, his need to change his pants quite <laughs> frequently because I, I mean they're terrifying. It's it's a that is definitely a dry weather car only. I mean it makes something like this seem manageable, doesn't it? Yeah, but um it, it, it is pretty crazy. So red red seems to be the nice colour to go for. Such a nice brown. It's nice and progressive if you're gentle with it. Yeah, absolutely. If you went and just planted your foot, I mean would be in there somewhere. Yes, I mean we're gonna go that way anyway, but not but through the quarry. The yeah exactly, <laughs> stay tarmac. It's a quite aggressive gear yeah. change, isn't it? And the steering feel is surprisingly nice actually. I mean that's two and a half thousand RPM guys and it's quiet. It's nothing. It's, yeah I can uh, such a shame about this weather but if it does it feels good like as i just mentioned the steering feels nice oh, the v8 is the party piece by all standards the sound of it and the way i can only imagine it's going it's to pull when you do hit that accelerator so yeah if you're looking for that something that's just a bit you know it's not a bmw 3 series this is going to keep a smile on your face i think that's for sure definitely I 
even like halfway through the rev range yet. No, and that was and probably then, a third throttle. Yeah. And I was, you know, slightly building course, up to that. Of course, yeah, third. yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't really know what else to say, actually. It's just, it's cool. It's just one of those cars you don't really, I mean, I won't really take in because it's realistically not something I'm going to buy anytime soon, or maybe never will, or, you know, something I've never really experienced otherwise. So it's just, uh, well, it's just a massive thank you to you guys. That's all right. For, Look, for making it possible. It, I really hope people do go ahead and check out your website and you know if you're someone who's found this video because you're in the market for one I mean this thing I can only say drives fantastically um, and I mean you guys are great just go down and check it out yeah, that's all right it's It'll just go a, quickly it's a nice taste into the world of what I'll call the nuts and bolts of the car yes throttle mm -hmm. steering wheel yeah engine Gearbox. noise that's that's yeah, yeah that's literally the 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 caveman approach to any car and this delivers it with lots to offer it is, yeah there <laughs> is that good. point actually i just watched the speed out there as soon as you get over 3000 it's like hooray <laughs> keeps going and again nowhere near 50 percent throttle there wow 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 I, I, because I'm such an exceptionally economical driver though, I have brought the average up to a very, very reasonable 13 from the earlier 12.7. I mean, there we go. That's Basically just... practical at this point. <laughs> it is. <laughs> let's, put, let's put the economical stamp on it. Absolutely. Well, look, thanks again for uh, giving me the opportunity to come and film with this car. Um, yeah, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's just not really something I would have ever thought I'd experience or potentially want to experience, but I think once you find out about the party piece, which is that engine, it becomes something a little bit more interesting. And I hope everyone watching this video has found it an interesting Look, and exciting car as well. Someone's got to take the first step into these cars at some point, and uh, I'm happy to be able to facilitate that. Hopefully the viewers have been really happy with um, what you've seen. Have you got any questions? Let us know. As always. Um, and keep telling us what else you want us to do videos on. And if there's anything that we can do for you, just let us know. Thanks so much. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Do do go ahead, check out their website. I'm always, well, I'm constantly doing it now. <laughs> you live on there. <laughs> I live on there. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll both see you guys again very, very soon.